What's up my friends, welcome back. In the past tutorial we have built an electronic speed controller for brushless motors. This is the board from that tutorial and it's based on Arduino. This is an ESC for sensorless brushless motors. So in that video I show you how to detect the position of the rotor using the back electromotive force. But that made the circuit quite complicated and also the code that I've used is not the best neither. So, in this tutorial we will build another electronic speed control for brushless motors and also improve the code. So guys, here is what we are going to do. I will take a brushless motor out from an old CD writer, one like this one. We will build a circuit to amplify the signals out from the hall sensors. Then we will build the triple phase bridge and the speed controller. And finally, using interruptions, we will read the PWM input from a radio receiver and control the speed of the motor with that signal. Just as any commercial electronic speed control would do. So let's get started. This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the JLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy, right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back! For this tutorial I've bought a sensor brushless motor like this one that already has the sensors amplified and each of the three sensor outputs here. But unfortunately this motor is too big and requires a huge amount of current to spin. And while making tests I've only burned my breadboard but the motor didn't even spin. So I've lowered the level of this tutorial and went with this motor. This is a brushless triple phase motor that I've took out from an old CD writer. Not all of the CD or DVD writers use censored motors, but this one does. I take the motor out and take a first look. I open it and as you can see I have the coils of the motor and three very small hole sensors that will detect magnetic fields. Each sensor has four pins. Two for the positive and negative output and two for the supply. We will have to supply 5 volts and ground to each of these sensors and then we will compare the negative and positive outputs in order to get our sensor signal. We know that we have 9 poles and that the sensors are separated 40 degrees one to each other so it will be very easy to detect the position of the motor. The first thing to do is to identify the pins. Using the multimeter I've managed to find each pin. In this case we first have the positive and negative outputs of the whole sensors. The positive and negative supply and each input of the three coils of the motor. But for the final project I've used this motor from another CD writer that you could see here on this PCB and the order of these pins is different. This is the order for this motor that I've used. I've soldered some wires to each of these pins. If you buy a sensored motor, the whole sensor are already amplified. So when the magnet is in front of it, you will get a low or high value. In this case ground or 5 volts, as you can see here on my oscilloscope when I rotate this commercial sensored motor. But our whole sensors have no amplifying circuit, so that's the next thing to do. This is the schematic for the motor. We supply 5 volts and ground to the sensors and then we will connect each of the negative and positive outputs of each sensor to a comparator. In this case I will use the LM324IC since it already has 4 op amps. Each time the positive output from the whole sensor is higher than the negative we will have a high pulse at the output so we can detect positive or negative magnetic fields. I solder everything on a piece of drill PCB like this one. Remember to add a 100 ohms resistor between 5 volts and the whole sensor positive supply to limit the current. Here I have the 3 inputs for the motor coils with black wires. Ground and 5 volt supply for the sensors and each of the sensors amplified outputs. I power the PCB and connect the oscilloscope to sensor output A and B. Now I spin the motor and as you can see we have a square signal for each pin with one third of phase difference between each signal. Now I connect sensor A and C 
and as you can see we now have two thirds phase difference. These three signals will help us know the position of the rotor. Ok guys, so let's look once again on how the brushless motor control will work. I suggest you to take a look on my other tutorial on the Arduino based electronic speed controller. Our motor has three coils. I know that inside we can see nine coils, but the truth is that these are three coils winded on nine poles. On the exterior of the motor we have 12 magnets. This motor uses magnetic strip, so we can't see the 12 different magnets. But there are 12 different polarity magnets as we can see here on this other brushless motor. This is the representation of our motor. We have 9 poles on the stator, 12 magnets on the rotor and 3 sensors. Since we have 3 coils, we will have 3 inputs, A, B and C. So we will need a triple phase bridge to control this motor. In order to control the rotation speed, we will have to apply power to these 3 inputs in a certain sequence. We start with positive power to the A input and ground to B. We leave the C input floating with nothing connected to it. That will create a magnetic field in the A coils that will push the rotor onto the right and into the B coils that will drag the rotor to the right as well, since positive with positive are repelling and negative with positive will attract. But if we don't switch the inputs, the rotation will stop here. For that, we switch to the next part of the sequence. We leave B connected to ground, but now we apply positive power to the C input instead of A. That will make the C coils to drag the positive magnet even more, and if we keep switching the inputs, we can create a full rotation. This is the sequence that we have to make. We enter through A and exit on B. Then we enter on C and exit on B, and so on with a total of 6 different steps. But how do we know when to switch to the next step? Well, here comes the job of the sensors, so let's place those on our motor representation. Right now we are in the first step of the sequence, so we have negative, positive and another negative magnet in front of the sensors. That will give us a 101 output. We keep on spinning and the A-hole sensor will now pass to zero, since now we have a positive magnet in front of it. The other two sensors are still the same. So now we have a 001, which is the next step of the sequence. During a full rotation we will have this sequence of the hull sensor outputs, as in this table here. So all we have to do is to detect these steps with a microcontroller and control the triple phase bridge. This is the triple phase bridge schematic. On the top side I've used P MOSFETs and on the bottom part N channel MOSFETs since the source is connected directly to ground. In the past tutorial of electronic speed controllers we have used a MOSFET driver to control the transistors since the microcontroller works at 5 volts but we will apply a higher voltage than that to the MOSFETs. I won't use a driver this time in order to keep it simple and just understand how this works. Instead, I will make my own driver with a BJT and a pull up at the gate of each MOSFET. When the top A MOSFET and the bottom B is activated, current is flowing through A and exit on the B coil. Next, we activate the C MOSFET and leave the bottom B activated, so now current is flowing from C to B and so on. As you can see, on each step we control two of the MOSFETs, one from the top part of the bridge and the other one from the bottom part. This is the schematic of my censored electronic speed controller. I mount it on my breadboard and test it. To make the sensor read and the MOSFET switch I will use the Arduino. I connect A, B and C sensor outputs to pin 8, 9 and 10 of the Arduino. Then pin 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 and 2 to the 6 MOSFETs of the bridge. I connect a potentiometer to analog input A3 in order to control the speed of the motor. I will later supply 12 volts to the main input bridge, but we are now ready for the code, so let's take a look. I define the sensor pins as inputs. Next, with these registers I configure pins 8, 9 and 10 to create interrupts. So each time one of these pins will change its state, we will go to the interrupt vector. 
Here we detect the sequence and decide the phase of the rotation, depending on the state of the whole sensors. If we have a 101, we switch to the first step. If we have a 001 to the second step, and so on as in the table before with a total of 6 steps. Easy right? So now in the void loop we create a case that will switch 2 MOSFETs on each step of the sequence, depending on what step we are on that sequence. In this case I will use port manipulation instead of digital write, since that is a lot faster. This is one of the improvements from the other tutorial. Using port manipulation it's way faster than using digital write. I read the potentiometer speed and create a delay between each step according to the potentiometer read value, mapped with a value from 1 to 4000 microseconds. Please read all the comments in the code in order to understand more. I upload the code and make sure that all the connections are made. I supply the circuit and as you can see the brushless motor is now spinning. I connect the probe of my oscilloscope to one of the MOSFETs gates. As you can see we have a square wave signal. But if I try to slow down the motor with my hand, the width of the poles will automatically adjust in order to match the speed of the motor and that's due to the whole sensor feedback. Also, using the potentiometer I can set the speed of the motor by changing the delay between each step of the sequence. But usually, commercial electronic speed controllers use a PWM signal input with a width range between 1000 and 2000 microseconds to control the speed. So for that, in the code I set pin 11 as the PWM input. Now in the interruption vector I detect each time that that pin changes state and measure the time between each pulse. I map that value to a delay from 3000 to 10 microseconds. You are able to make some tests and change these values according to your motor. Now I add another part to the code, so the motor will start spinning only for values of PWM input higher than 1070, which is a very common value. Now I make the test once again, but now using my radio transmitter and the PWM receiver. So as you can see I can control the speed and start or stop the motor with my radio receiver, so the code kind of works. I say kind of because it's not perfect. Now I use this final schematic that you could find in the link below and mount the entire circuit on this drill PCB and using the Atmega 320 chip with the 60MHz crystal oscillator and all the components that we need to make it work. I also have a 5V voltage regulator for the Atmega chip and that will also supply the op-amp for the motor sensors. I use an external FTDI module. I connect the RX, TX and DTR pins and upload the code. The PCB has an input for the PWM signal from the radio receiver and shares both 5V and ground. Here we have the outputs for the 3 calls of the motor and the input and supply from the whole sensors. And that's it, this is my prototype of a homemade electronic speed controller for censored brushless motors. So guys, we control each of the 6 transistors of the triple phase bridge. We have a whole sensor feedback in order to know the rotor position and adapt the speed automatically. We have a PWM input control just as any commercial electronic speed controller and we have also look on how to amplify the whole sensors. So there you go my friends, we have built our homemade electronic speed controller for sensored brushless motors. Have in mind that this is just a prototype, it's not very powerful, still have a lot of parts to improve in both the circuit and the code and is more for learning purposes. Anyway, I hope that this tutorial helped you learn a bit more on how censored ESCs work and how to build one. If you want to increase the voltage and power, use better components. Maybe use IGBTs instead of MOSFETs. And also add some drivers in case you use MOSFETs. Always check the datasheets of each component and see its maximum values. As you have seen at the beginning, using way bigger motors the transistors only got hot but the motor didn't spin at all. For small motors you could use bipolar transistors as well. And if you use n-channel MOSFETs for both the upper part of the bridge and the bottom part as well, which by the way it's not recommended, check the code and change the output values. I say that because in our case we activate the n-channel MOSFETs with a digital write low, since we have a BJT transistor as a driver at its gate. 
and the P-channel MOSFET with the digital write high. So if you use different MOSFETs you might want to change these values here in the code. Also don't supply power to the circuit if you are not sure of all the connections. Check all the schematics, part list and codes below and more information on my webpage electronoops.com. If my videos help you and you would like to help my projects like this one, I have a Patreon campaign. The link is down below as always. I would really appreciate that guys. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.